Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ashur. I dedicated this session for questions and answers related to my videos about peptic ulcer. So the first question received from my students is, uh, it says, I just copied that question as it is from the audience or the students, so it's just copy. Uh, so don't please focus on the grammatical errors or whatever. So uh, it says, can doctor explain how gastrin induce the release of histamine? Okay, uh, we said before that gastrin can uh, work by uh, two pathways to enhance HCL production. Number one is through the minor pathway by activating CCK2 receptors on the surface of the parietal cells. Uh, the other pathway is to activate the CCK2 receptors on the ECL uh, cell membrane. And this will lead to the release of histamine from these cells. Histamine, uh, in turn, will activate H2 receptors, okay? So what are these uh, two receptors? As you remember, uh, CCK2 or CCKB is GQ protein coupled receptor. And uh, H2 is GSPCR or GS protein coupled receptor. So how they activate HCL secretion? Let us see. So uh, the major pathway, so gastrin here, activates the release of histamine from the ECL. Histamine is here. Histamine will activate, so suppose this is histamine, will activate H2 receptors, which is GS protein coupled receptor. This will activate the GS uh, protein. Uh, it will be converted from the GDP status into the GTP, guanosine triphosphate status. And this will activate adenylate cyclase, which will convert ATP in cyclic AMP, which, which will activate protein kinase A. The minor pathway, uh, in the minor pathway, gastrin activate directly activate the CCK2 receptors on the surface of parietal cells. CCK2 is GQ PCR. So they will activate the GQ, and GQ will be converted from the GDP into GTP, guanosine triphosphate status which will convert, uh, activate the phospholipase C. Phospholipase C will degrade PIP2 into diacylglycerol, which will activate protein kinase C, and will release uh, inocytal triphosphate, which will release calcium, and also will activate protein kinases. And this will culminate into, uh, uh, as you see here, this is a collective mechanism showing the gastrin and histamine activating, uh, uh, you know, these uh, G-protein coupled receptors and culminating at the end to activation, activation of protein kinase. Protein kinase will activate the translocation of the pump from the proton pump from the cytoplasm into the surface of the parietal cells and the fusion of this pump into the cell membrane with the exchange of potassium with a, a, a proton. Okay, I hope this part is clear. So, uh, question number two. Uh, can you explain uh, more on how zollinger ellison syndrome can cause hypersecretion of gastric acid, HCM? So let's remember first, zollinger ellison syndrome is a clinical syndrome, syndrome caused by ectopic secretion, ectopic secretion of gastrin. So gastrin is a hormone, okay? Uh, usually it is produced by the G cells in the antrum of the stomach, right? But here it's, it's produced by ectopic. Okay, it's a tumor actually. Okay, tumor secreting gastrin, gastrinoma. Okay, this will, uh, so now this tumor will release gastrin. Gastrin, the secretion of gastrin will result in enhancement of gastric uh, secretion. This will increase HCL secretion. Okay, so uh, as we just explained in the previous uh, slide, uh, this acid secretion can cause peptic ulcer, diarrhea, and uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. This gastrinoma is usually is malignant, okay? If it's malignant, means that the proliferation of the cells is uh, very rapid, which will uh, uh, result in a huge production of gastrin. This will lead to more and more production of HCL, okay? Question number three, uh, epithelial restitution. Okay, what's epithelial restitution? how they function as a mucosal defense. So now let's first define uh, epithelial restitution is a process in which man in migration of cells from the 
gland neck cells, seals small erosions, small erosions like that, okay, to reestablish intact epithelium. So cells will migrate, okay, from the gland neck cells to seal the, uh, uh, to reestablish the intact epithelium. Epithelium, so this is the uh, mucus uh, neck cells, okay. These cells will migrate up, okay, to seal this erosion or ulcer or whatever, okay. So the area of injured epithelium will be quickly repaired by restitution in just minutes, okay. It's, by the way, it's independent of cell division, okay. So cell division and regeneration is a different issue. Here the key word migration, okay. Uh, the, there are two players that play a very important role in the uh, restitution, which are prostaglandins and nitric oxide. If you remember, we said before nitric oxide and prostaglandin enhance mucosal blood flow. Okay, if you, they do that, they provide cells with nut nutrients, the migrating cells with nutrients they need uh, for their cellular activity, they provide them with nutrients and oxygen necessary for cellular activity. Okay, so this is for question number three. Question number four. In patients with pernicious anemia, does he develop peptic ulcer? If does, uh, is it similar treatment like other normal persons since the antibodies attack his own parietal cells? The receptors will not be there, uh, aren't they, doctor? Okay, so let's take it one step at a time. Okay, so in pernicious anemia, there is a production of O2 antibodies. O2 antibodies means they are coming from cell, coming from the same person, okay? They coming from the same person to attack tissues in the same person. That's why they call them O2 antibodies. Again, it's parietal cells. Parietal cells produce HCL and also they produce the intrinsic factor. That's why this can result in pernicious anemia, which is uh, uh, due to deficiency, severe deficiency of uh, intrinsic factor. Uh, so anyway, the, the pernicious anemia will in pernicious, pernicious anemia there uh, there'll be uh, autoantibodies against parietal cells. Okay, this will damage the uh, function of the parietal cells. So there is no production of HCM. This is called a chlorhydria. Okay, so no HCM. So gastric secretion with no HCM. Okay. So usually it's associated with no or rare peptic ulcer disease, okay? So they, there is an old saying that says no acid, no ulcer, but there are some exceptions to that, okay? So uh, if patients taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for a long time, okay, every time he or she has a pain, whatever, anything, inflammation, little fever, whatever, he takes non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, anti-inflammatory drugs, like ibuprofen, uh, uh, aspirin, diclofenac, whatever, okay? So these non-steroidal anti drugs, they work by inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis. This will lead to inhibition of mucus, bicarbonate secretion, and decrease mucosal blood flow, and this will result in uh, establishment of peptic ulcer disease. So this is regarding to the pathophysiology part, okay? So what can we do? So uh, in these patients, the treatment should be focused more on the protective factors rather than the damaging factors. Actually, you don't need to inhibit HCL secretion because it's already inhibited, okay? So for God's sake, leave the guy alone. And so really there is no HCL learning. So why do you use H2 blocker? Why do you use proton pump inhibitor? Give me a break, okay? So no need to do that. Uh, actually, if you do that, uh, uh, studies sh showed that this will enhance the, uh, the, 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 the growth of bacteria and can also result in uh, uh, cancer and other issues. So no need at all to use uh, H2 antagonists or proton pump inhibitors or to inhibit H cell because it's already inhibited, okay? So, and if it's inhibited, pepsin, okay, you know pepsin is produced as pepsinogen from cheap cells. And this pepsinogen is converted into uh, uh, the active form of pepsin by the action of HCL. So again, these two factors are not there. Pile acids, you don't, know, don't need to do anything about them, okay? H. pylori, if the patient has H. pylori, you deal with it, okay? We'll talk about that in the next video. Clear stress, okay, maybe use an, uh, uh, antioxidants uh, like vitamin E and others. Uh, ethanol, okay? And smoking, I forgot to put here also smoking, all of these can damage the uh, uh, mucosal blood, 
barriers, okay, a mucosal barriers, I'm sorry, the mucosal barriers and can enhance the development of ulcer. So minor, uh, I mean, part here, but it's required. I mean, to ask the patient to stop smoking, stop drinking uh, alcohol and others. Uh, and if there is itch polar, you deal with it, uh, treat it. Uh, the other one you need to focus on is to enhance these protective barriers. So because the issue, just please go with the issue. So the issue is non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs inhibited the production of prostaglandin and this led to the, the, the development of ulcer. So the issue in the beginning were not related exactly to the enhancement of HCL secretion. It was mainly due to a, a, a defect in the mucosal defense mechanisms. Okay, so I need to enhance these uh, mucosal defense mechanisms. I need to enhance mucus bicarbonate secretion, mucosal blood flow, prostaglandin and nitric oxide, which will enhance these three things. Uh, epical membrane resistance, but it's not easy to do anything with this, but this we can deal with them, okay. Uh, actually, prostaglandin and nitric oxide can also induce the, or help with the restitution and regeneration, okay. Gastric surfactant, you need to uh, decrease the consumption of uh, alcohol to protect against the uh, loss of this gastric surfactant. So what we actually medically use, okay, for this, okay, so now pernicious anemia, okay, as you said, this is the, the pathophysiology. So now we need uh, to do what? Use uh, prostaglandin, stuff that can enhance the mucosal defense mechanisms, like prostaglandin and morphine. We'll talk about this in the next video, like misoprostol, sacral fate, we'll talk about it, carbinoxolone, bismuth, uh, and anti uh, H. pylori drugs, okay? All of these, except H. anti pylori drugs, can enhance uh, the mucus, bicarbonate, and the blood flow. Okay, so now we are correcting everything. This will result in the uh, healing. You give the the the, pip, the ulcer cell the uh, the enough supplies and time to heal itself, and this will heal the peptides. I hope uh, this answer uh, all of these four questions. I'm happy that we dealt with these so that we keep the quality of the our teaching. Okay, and I will uh, see you soon in the uh, next next part of the question. This part one of the question and answers. I'll see you soon. So until then, bye. See you later.